After a few days have passed since Yaimiko's release, the new catalyst Oatsworn Eye is now available for free, and in this video, I will show you how well it works with her and if it's able to solve one of her biggest issues in the game. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Dragon City, a free to play mobile game which you can download using my link and collect thousands of dragons of different rarities to build your very own dragon empire. And what's cool about the game is that you can discover new species when you breed two dragons and obtain a dragon egg, which you can then hatch, feed, evolve, and teach them new attacks. Attacks, but to become a real Dragon Master, you can go to battles and make your dragons more powerful, and you can even take part in some PvP fights like the Arena to challenge other players or your friends. City building is also a big part of the game, so by collecting food, gold, and gems, you can build new upgrades and reach new levels of power. You can also join an alliance and participate in exclusive events to unlock special rewards, but there's new minigames each week and a battle pass where you can get daily rewards and dragons. In fact, the game has had many collaborations with popular YouTubers, so maybe one day I can get my own Gacha Gamer Dragon. But right now, if you download the game using my link in the description, you'll get a special starter pack which includes 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and a really cute Snowdrift Dragon. So be sure to use the link, help support my channel, and check out Dragon City now. So, it's no secret by now that if you've seen any of Yaimiko's videos showcasing her, a lot of content creators, including myself, have mentioned that while a majority of her damage does come from her elemental skill, the massive energy cost of 90 has been a bit of a problem when it comes to activating her burst as soon as the cooldown is off. And so far, the best solution to have smooth rotations, where you can utilize Yaimiko fully, has been achieved by pairing her together with a good energy generator like Raiden, Fischl, or Electro Traveler. But even then, you still need to come up with at least 100 50% energy recharge on average, just so she can activate the burst without a delay. So it's almost a little too suspicious how close these numbers align together when a fully refined Oatsworn Eye that you can get from the latest event offers 48% energy recharge from its passive. And I wanted to talk about this weapon in today's video, how good it is on her, whether it's better than any other catalyst options, and just in general, show you everything you need to know about Oatsworn Eye. But I also wanted to let you know that activating Yaimiko's burst efficiently isn't the only way you can play with her in the game since you can easily use her as a low-budget support by equipping her with a Tenacity Forset and Thrilling Tails, because it is quite easy to maintain her skill, and you can provide the Thrilling Tails buff for someone like Raiden if you're using them together, but nonetheless, I think this new catalyst isn't just great for one thing only, and it actually surprised me several times when I saw what it's capable of. So, looking at Oatsworn Eye's stats, it has a high base attack of 565 that is matched by several other 4-star catalysts like Mapamari, Hakushin Ring, as well as Wine and Song, but what it also has is a really nice 27.6% attack substat, which basically means that when it comes to raising her total attack, this is one of the best attack boosting 4-stars you can use, aside from Royal Grimoire, which no one wants to talk about because the passive is just really underwhelming, and the weapon generally falls off in efficiency when compared to other options. But while the weapon is almost identical to it, what completely separates them apart is the passive, which fully refined provides 48% energy recharge after using the skill, and this passive always refreshes, so even after deploying all three of her totems, the timer resets after each one. Now the best way to show you just how much of an impact this passive can have on energy generation, you can see here a comparison between 100% and 148% energy recharge tests, whether she's off-field or on-field when the particles arrive, and what this basically means is that there's going to be a lot of energy flying around while fighting and maintaining the passive isn't going to be hard, so this provides a really good solution to her energy problems, especially if you lack the energy recharge substats from her artifacts. But now, let's talk about her damage. First, I want to make it clear that I honestly think there isn't really a best-in-slot artifact set for Yaimiko that she can use in every team build, so generally speaking, she's a bit like Xiao who thrives on substats, and while I am using on her a 4-set emblem of Severed Fate, the only reason for this would be, well, the substats as you can see for yourself. And with the level 6 skill and burst talents, as well as the main stats shown below here, using the Oatsworn Eye, she can dish out around 15,000 and 19,500 damage from her burst, while the totems will deal around 4,000 damage. And keep in mind, the extra 48% energy recharge does count towards her emblem foreset, but I've seen about 5% damage increase on average, so it's nothing too major and more of a nice thing to have. Now, in a more number-focused scenario, by buffing her damage with someone like Kazuha and Benny Boy, it skyrockets to roughly 40,000 and 51,000 damage from burst, while the totems deal around 7,500 damage. But if using someone like Benny, his attack buff 
will disappear from Yai within few seconds after switching her out, so it's always more realistic to look at just the numbers where you can reduce the enemy's resistance and maybe benefit from something like Noblesse Force it instead. So with these results so far, it's pretty clear how important attack is to Miko, because both base and substat from Oatsworn Eye can tremendously help her out and make use of those critical rate and damage substats, and what's even more interesting, when you compare it against the fully refined Witsith without any of its passives activated, the Oatsworn Eye actually deals about 3.7% more damage if she's not buffed, but ironically enough, almost the same amount of percentage loss can be seen if the damage does get buffed. So more or less, I would say that the efficiency of this new free to play catalyst and a fully refined Witsith without any of its passives activated puts them together almost in the same league. However, things do get out of hand once Witsith activates either attack or elemental damage passives, because now Oatsworn Eye deals about 28 to 33% less damage from the burst and totems when compared to it, which is honestly not too surprising, seeing how Witsith is also able to beat unrefined Kagura Severity burst attacks. And speaking of which, the Eye deals about 22% less burst damage than the new signature 5 star and 42% less damage from totems. But going back to Witsith, it's important to consider that when Elemental Mastery passive comes up, it will only increase her skill damage, so in other words, Oatsworn Eye's burst damage will be more or less the same when Witsith passive is on cooldown, as well as when it has Elemental Mastery buff active, which basically means depending on the situation and how you play your rotations, a good chunk of time the weapons will stay on almost the same power level. Still, you can achieve a lot in 10 seconds here, and it would be stupid to ignore Witsith's potential as a major selling point. However, Oatsworn's passive is extremely reliable and comfortable to use, even if it does not translate directly to better damage. Finally, without getting too deep into practical tests, from all the free-to-play options so far, this weapon is definitely the best one for her, just in terms of raw power you can get from its substat and base attack, and even if something like Hakushin Ring offers an elemental damage boost, there is one small problem with it, and it's the fact you cannot trigger the passive when Yaimiko is off-field, and that's kind of her playstyle, unless you use her as your main damage dealer, or as a so-called driver for electrocharged teams, but even then, the consistency from Oatsworn Eye is better in almost every scenario, and also, let's not forget you don't need to spend prototype materials and ores just to get a fully refined Hakushin Ring. So what do I think about this new free-to-play catalyst? Well, the situation here is a bit tricky because on paper, you could say that its damage potential is almost on the same level as a fully refined Witsith when its passive is on a cooldown, which will last for about 20 seconds and that is quite a lot of time if you're doing challenges like the Abyss. However, these 10 seconds from Witsith are pretty massive gains when compared to Oatsworn Eye, and when it comes to Kagura's Verity, it's best in slot for a good reason, and it outdamages the free-to-play option in every scenario by a pretty huge margin. But this is why I wanted to make this video in the first place. I think we often get obsessed with numbers because while pushing for those really big burst attacks is fun, Hoyoverse have been silently releasing characters with absolutely horrific energy costs, and this ends up as a major issue if you want to have consistent rotations. Like, building the best damage dealer is not a big deal in this game, anyone can do that. But when it comes to understanding the importance of energy, well, this is where things start to fall apart. Which is why I believe that if you do not have any of the catalysts shown here, and or you have trouble obtaining at least 150% energy recharge from substats, this is actually a really good free-to-play weapon for her, and I like to think of it as a comfortable option that she can easily use in basically any team comp. Also, let's not forget that while the new event lasts, it's easier to max out this weapon, and it can still beat other options like Hakushin Ring, Mapamari, Dodoko Tails, and even Memory of Dust, which isn't really a huge accomplishment, but still a nice thought and from what I've seen so far, it's almost on the same level as a unrefined Solar Pearl if you can achieve good enough critical rate from the substats alone. However, this is definitely not the case we've had with Cinnabar Spindle when it got released for Albedo, which almost beats every other 4-star and 5-star option out there, but there's a good reason why Oatsworn isn't tailor-made for Yaimiko only. See, the thing is, this weapon has potential with other Catalyst users who either have problems with energy and need more attack, so it's not going to be a niche option that only Yaimiko Miko benefits from, and instead, it will be useful for future characters, especially if the developers continue giving new characters high burst costs. 
But in the end, even with 48% energy recharge from the new weapon's passive, Yaimiko still needs a battery to burst off cooldown, and the only solution that kind of makes it easier to land her bursts more often without relying on Electro Teammate is her first constellation. Still, that's not something a free-to-play weapon is ever going to solve, but it is a nice option to go for if you're someone who just got to the endgame and trying to build some decent artifact sets, although, as I said multiple times already, this weapon remains relevant for as long as you have problems with obtaining energy recharge from substats, but as soon as you get to this point, as you can see from my artifacts here, I already have 160% energy recharge from the substats alone, so it's better for me to just use the other better options out there, although if I ever do lend this set to other characters, I'll more than likely fall back to Old Sworn Eye. Anyway, before we get to the end, make sure to check out today's sponsor, Dragon City, as it really helps out my channel a lot. And if you haven't done already, click the subscribe button for more videos coming out soon. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you next time.